Today we're taking a first look at the Pepwave Max Transit Pro E, the replacement for our longtime top pick, the Max Transit Duo. What's different, what's changed, and why? Well, we got all the details. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center, here to give you an update on the latest product we've gotten our hands on from Peplink, the Pepwave Max Transit Pro E. Now, this is kind of an unusual product in that there is very, very little different change between with it, other than it from its predecessor, the Max Transit Duo. And we've done other videos about this whole product line and why Peplave basically ran out of parts. There's supply chain issues and the parts no longer exist for the old Max Transit lineup. So they've come out with what parts are available, the Max Transit Pro E, which we've got here, and then also the Max Transit Core will be coming out very soon, which is basically this without any Wi-Fi at all. So what is this and how does it compare with the, the Max Transit Duo? Well, the starters, it is a cellular integrated router with two cellular modems, both Category 12, just like the Category 12 version of the Max Transit Duo. If you look at the back on the cellular side, you'll see they look exactly the same. You've got your four cellular antennas, you know, two by two MIMO, so two antennas for each modem. You've got your SIM slots down here. You've got four SIM slots, two SIM slots for each modem. And so these two modems act completely independently, which is really, really great for connection reliability, which is why we and so many other uh, nomads who really need a reliable connection have grown so fond of this device. And then you also have uh, two Wi-Fi antennas to either connect to roof-mounted Wi-Fi for long-range Wi-Fi as WAN, connecting to a campground or whatnot, or you can use the internal antennas and use host uh, your own local network. So it's a Wi-Fi 5 radio, 802.11ac, and pretty, pretty capable all around. Then on the other side is where you see some differences. So the, basically there's not a ton of them. The old Max Transit Duo just had two Ethernet ports, one WAN port that could also be used as a LAN port, and then a LAN port, and there are uh, gigabit ports. Um, the Max Transit Pro E has four Ethernet ports, so some, somewhat different there. Um, the four ports are all gigabit ports. Uh, one of them is a WAN port that can also still be switched back to be a LAN port if you need it. And then one of them, now this is the most significant difference, is power over Ethernet enabled. So that port uh, can then power a device uh, like a security camera or an access point over Ethernet. So you plug in a, like a Pepwave access point like this and you no longer need to run power to your access point separately. Uh, so we've got here the Pepwave AC1 Mini, the um, Pepwave AP1 AC Mini, and the Pepwave AP1 AX Lite, so the Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 5 versions of their access points. You can power these directly off of a hotspot with power over Ethernet, or off the router with power over Ethernet. But there is a pretty big catch. Power over Ethernet is only turned on if you're putting 56 volts into this as power input. The AC power supply, Pepwave includes, is just a 12 volt power supply. You can still, just like with the, um, the Transit Duo, you can still wire directly into 12 volt using the little power brick um, that is attached to this as well, um, or to the power slot, the uh, power input. But if you really want to use that power over Ethernet port, you need to have something that puts 56 volts in, either an uh, AC power supply that Pepwave sells, or a partner like Mobile Must Have also has DC power supplies that will take 12 volt or 24 volt DC and put out 56 volts. And then, well, that little box gives you 56 volts and suddenly you're able to control your uh, access point with only one wire. It's an advantage for certain types of installation. We've actually set up our van with this sort of install. So we've got the uh, Transit Pro E um, wired up to 56 volts. We've got an access point inside the van, and then we're using Wi-Fi as WAN on the roof of our campground Wi-Fi. So inside network, controlled via the access point, and roof via Wi-Fi as WAN. So a nice setup, but again, it's not really that major of a change uh, from the old Transit Duo. Other than that, there really aren't any differences. The internal components, the modems, everything else is pretty much exactly the same 
Um, so keep that in mind. But then the other big difference, the Transit Duo for the longest time was $999, no, $999, fairly expensive, but well, kind of worth it. It was really, really rock solid of a cellular router. When uh, the part shortage started to hit, PepWave increased the price of the Transit Duo to $1199 and introduce this at $12.99. So you're paying quite a bit more, $300 more for those two extra ethernet ports and the PoE capabilities from what you used to be able to get the Transit Duo for. And, well, if you don't need Wi-Fi, you'll be able to get the Transit Core for $11.99. Now, is there, like, what about the Pro name? They've changed it, they're calling it Pro. There's gotta be something more advanced about it. And, well, there actually isn't. Like, compared to the um, PepWave Max BR1 uh, Pro 5G that is also fairly new, this is a really a completely new design with um, much faster router throughput. So these are capable of about 400 megabits per second max speed through passing through the router. This is capable of a gigabit per second. Has more routing capabilities, faster um, core hardware, but this 5G device has only got a single modem in it, so no redundancy of connections like that. And, well, the Max, uh, Max BR1 Pro 5G is $14.99. So things have gotten a little pricey out there, but this is, I guess, more of a pro caliber internals. And we expect sometime in 2022, PepWave is uh, likely to come out with a, a Max Transit Pro that is a real pro and it has the you know kind of the internals from the BR1, but you know, take into the you know more of the you know the features and the uh, uh, market niche of the uh, Transit Pro. So this is an interim product. Um, we expect this to be around for a while, but sometime in 2022, we expect it to get a bigger brother with uh, more internal capabilities, more based off of the BR1 um, Pro here. So that's kind of a, a look at the, the state of um, the Peplink Max Transit lineup. And we are going to be making this actually our daily driver in our van and our next trip across the country to see if we notice any significant differences from the Transit Duo we have been literally using almost every day for years. Um, but that's the latest. Our members will be able to keep up with all of our testing notes in the forums over at the Mobile Internet Resource Center. So please join us there if you'd like to learn any more observations. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.